we're looking at a significant annual reduction in out-of-pocket spending, amounting to nearly $7.5 billion. And you know what? This is a matter of great importance. During the negotiations on whether the government would remain open, I had conversations with my Republican colleagues who support immigration reform. Now, let's talk about new energy policies. The OCCP has a limited window to come to an agreement, with only four votes to spare before late May. The party has a list of potential demands, including a across-the-board cut in discretionary spending and shorter trips with the Finance Committee to discuss matters such as food stamps. However, these demands are likely to change as House Republicans finalize their bill in the upcoming weeks. Another contentious issue is the proposal to raise the limit for one year, which could trigger a battle over federal spending during the presidential primaries. There have been discussions with six to ten lawmakers at a time regarding these matters. The stakes couldn't be higher for Kevin McCarthy, as any misstep could weaken his speakership, with a single frustrated member having the power to vote for his termination. Unlike other items, there is a slim chance for any debt ceiling limit to become law, and it's widely disliked by the Republican Party. Welcome to my channel. Your go-to channel for all things stimulus check updates and Social Security. Moving on, the governor of New Mexico recently announced a bill to distribute the newest round of $500. The state's taxation and revenue department will automatically send rebates of $500 to single filers and $1,000 to married individuals. These rebates are intended for households, and any New Mexico resident who filed their 2021 New Mexico personal income tax return and is not claimed as a dependent will receive the rebates without needing to apply. It's important to note that the governor emphasized there is no application process to receive these rebates. If you received your tax refund through direct deposit, the rebate will also be sent via direct deposit. Others will receive a check in the mail, with direct deposits being processed and mailed out first, followed by checks in the following weeks. Eligible residents of New Mexico have until next year to claim this money, so make sure you don't miss out on the stimulus check you're entitled to. In North Carolina, hundreds of thousands of families could receive another check from the state. The state is set to receive approximately $5.7 billion from the latest stimulus package, and Governor Cooper intends to use that money for an additional round of extra credit grants. Unlike last year, these checks will be distributed based on income limits, aiming to provide assistance with the costs associated with remote learning and homeschooling. Now let's talk about the fourth stimulus check, Social Security Benefits, SSI, and SSDI. Keep watching this video because we have a lot of news to cover, and you don't want to miss out. More direct payments are being dispersed to millions of people and it has been confirmed that states will continue to send out stimulus and tax refunds until the end of 2024. This means you might be eligible to claim a fourth stimulus check before New Year's in 2023. This year has been marked by a rapid increase in inflation, putting financial strain on citizens, particularly those from low-income households who are grappling with the rising cost of living. The economy has faced challenges due to supply chain shortages, leading to higher prices for everyday items, including groceries. Additionally, sanctions on oil imports have exacerbated these shortages. In June of this year, the average price of a gallon of gas in America nearly reached $5, prompting the Federal Reserve to raise rates in an attempt to curb inflation. Despite these measures, many residents continue to face financial difficulties due to the increased costs. To alleviate the financial burden, it incorporates high cost sharing features like deductibles and copays. However, the Medicaid cliff presents a significant challenge for millions of seniors whose incomes place them slightly above the poverty line. Unlike other federal programs that gradually decrease assistance, Medicaid abruptly terminates coverage for individuals with incomes even slightly above the poverty threshold. Consequently, they are much less likely to seek medical care or afford prescription medications. Addressing this issue, President Biden is currently pushing for a new Medicare reform. Biden emphasizes his administration's strong focus on reducing health care costs and criticizes Republicans for their intention to scale back Medicare coverage for millions of people. Thus far, Biden has made a commitment to safeguard Medicare and Social Security while highlighting his administration's successful efforts to compel pharmaceutical companies to lower insulin prices for Americans suffering from diabetes. 
The White House believes it has a compelling message by showcasing a bill passed last year, projected to save taxpayers billions of dollars and reduce prescription costs for approximately 84 million Americans who depend on it. Biden discusses how his administration is implementing the provisions of a law passed by a Democratic-controlled Congress last year. This legislation, known as the capillary law, has already impacted the price of insulin and empowers the federal government to negotiate deals on a select few pharmaceutical prescriptions for Medicare beneficiaries. The government expects significant savings through these negotiations and aims to generate revenue through a rule that requires prescription manufacturers to compensate Medicare when they raise prices beyond the inflation rate. Notably, the current legislation sets the price of insulin at $35 for disabled and older Americans relying on Medicare. Biden has proposed extending this price cap to cover all Americans, but this plan faces significant challenges. Previous attempts to regulate insulin prices for insured Americans, uninsured individuals, and those with private insurance failed in the Democratic-controlled Congress last year. Another provision in the law that the administration hopes will have a widespread impact requires pharmaceutical companies to provide rebates to Medicare when they raise prescription costs faster than inflation. Additionally, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has introduced two proposals aimed at drastically reducing carbon emissions and accelerating the shift towards full electrification. The initial set of proposed standards targets emissions from passenger cars, vans, and light trucks, while the second set focuses on heavier-duty vehicles such as delivery trucks, dump trucks, and buses. According to estimates from the American Petroleum Institute, a PEF, these rules are implemented, two-thirds of new sedans and 50% of heavier trucks could be electrified by 2032. At the Morgan Hill Senior Center, the social security increase was well received by everyone, but the seniors also emphasize the importance of maintaining perspective due to their years of experience. How are you doing this morning? The 85 seniors who gather at the Centennial Reese Center in the city showed their support for breast cancer awareness by dressing in pink. The Senior Center serves as a place for social connections and cost-cutting measures, which is particularly important for those on fixed incomes, especially with the rising cost of food. We have significant updates regarding the fourth stimulus check and Social Security benefits, which are covered in this video. It is essential to watch as there is crucial information about the stimulus payment that you need to be aware of. Exciting news! Several states have recently announced new plans to provide additional stimulus aid to low-income households during the winter season. These states have introduced more than nine rounds of stimulus payments to help Americans in need. As inflation continues to impact the United States, many of these proposals are finally being signed into law. Residents of six specific states might expect to receive extra cash next year. Although these payment programs commence in 2022, some may not conclude until 2023. Eligibility requirements, such as timely tax filing, must be met to receive these checks, and some recipients may not receive their benefits until 2023. New Jersey homeowners are among those set to receive additional funds and the exact amount that New Jersey residents will receive. Thank you for joining me, your go-to channel for all things stimulus checks and personal finance tips. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.